Good morning. I am Christopher Coates, and I'm here to welcome you to our Locust webinar uh, focused on building the next walkable urban place in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Locust is the national coalition of real estate developers and investors who build and promote walkable urban development across America. Uh, we're really excited to have uh, Mayor Ed Talowski, as well as Shannon Kalari, Acting Director of the Department of Community and Economic Development of City of Allentown, here to present a number of projects that are in their city. As you, you know, that LOCUS has, over the past year, hosted a number of webinars of opportunities uh, to connect real estate developer professionals who build and promote local urban development in local communities. And so today, I am really excited to bring in Shannon, who will give us an insight of some of the great development opportunities in Allentown. Shannon? Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, we are here to talk to you today about the city of Allentown and all of the great opportunities here in the city of Allentown. And the first thing we're going to do is introduce you to uh, the city and the region. Next slide. Okay, so the city of Allentown is located in Pennsylvania. It's part of what we call the Lehigh Valley. Allentown is actually the third largest city in Pennsylvania with a population of almost 120,000 people. We're ideally situated 90 miles from New York City and 60 miles from Philadelphia. Uh, the Lehigh Valley is home to uh, 11 top colleges and universities. Next slide. We're proud to say that we're the 69th largest metropolitan region in the United States. Next slide. And here's a little bit of information about the Lehigh Valley. The entire metropolitan statistical area has over $35 billion in economic, um, in, in economic resources. Um, the whole region's population is 658,000. We've had great uh, job creation in the past um, many years with over 28,000 jobs created um, in the past several years and we're home to three Fortune 500 companies. Next slide, please. So the Lehigh Valley's gross domestic product keeps growing and is showing growth in every measurable subsector. We have a balanced and multifaceted economy. Um, basically, we have no dependence on a single industry, which leads to a healthier and more vibrant regional economy. Next slide. So the city of Allentown is in a transformation stage. In the last 24 months, we've had over 2.6 million square feet developed and over $1 billion invested in such things as entertainment and Class A office space, as well as restaurants and a hotel. Next slide. We're making headlines all over the country. In fact, earlier this year, the Urban Land Institute recognized Allentown as one of six transforming communities, specifically around the use of innovative partnerships and financing. And so what was the catalyst for all of this downtown development? Next slide. So we're here today to talk to you about our neighborhood improvement zone. The Neighborhood Improvement Zone, otherwise known as the NIS, was part of legislation that was passed in 2011 that authorized 127 acres eligible for revitalization through the uh, utilization of tax increment revenues. Basically, we're able to use 21 state taxes and four local taxes um, towards eligible approved projects to pay down debt service. Because of the cost incurred in putting the programs together, we have over, uh, we, we require about a $2 million project in order to use the incentive. And the end result is the ability to execute uh, development and a lease strategy that leads to a higher return on investment. Next slide. So I mentioned that there's 127 acres eligible for the revitalization. And the yellow areas on this map indicate the areas where the NIS incentive can be used. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Ed Pulowski. Well, thank you, everyone. And for those of you joining us, thank you. Um, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the NIS and the NIS benefits. Uh, it is a unique zone, as Shannon pointed out. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, the zone is uh, one of the only zones. In fact, it is the only zone in Pennsylvania. It probably will be the only zone in Pennsylvania. Uh, they've tried to copy it. Uh, they have a thing called the CRIS, the Keystone Innovation Zone. Uh, unfortunately, the copy is not quite as good as the original, um, and the original, the way it's set up, will probably never be duplicated again. I, I would venture to say it's probably the greatest economic, uh, one of the greatest economic zones in the country. Uh, it allows you to capture all state and federal, uh, I'm sorry, all state and local taxes uh, for the next 30 years. The benefits last 30 years. 
your tax dollars could be re could be used directly to reduce uh, your rent that you're charging your tenants and to pay for capital improvements. Uh, the, you use your reduced rent as a competitive advantage to attract other businesses uh, into uh, your properties. Uh, work is, is strengthened, more collective urban community because we're, we're actually creating a, an entirely new environment as I'll, I'll explain in a second. And the urban setting helps to attract and retain workforce. But the bottom line here is dollars. Please go to the next slide. So the financing is, is, is very simple. Um, you as a developer, you find a site. It could be a substantial rehabilitation or new construction. Most development that's happening right now in Allentown is new construction. Um, you basically determine what your future increment is. So anyone who actually leases in your building, anybody, if it's a bank, if it's an insurance company, if it's a restaurant, all the state taxes that are generated by that entity um, basically come back to you as a developer to pay for debt service for 30 years. Um, I refer to it sort of like a, a TIF on steroids uh, because as a TIF focuses on basically real estate taxes, this focuses on all the other taxes uh, that uh, would affect uh, potential um, a tenant. So bank share tax, tax, stock franchise tax, insurance premium tax, cigarette tax, uh, 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 business income tax from the city, business uh, licensing taxes, any tax you could think of that is generated by that tenant comes back to you as developer to pay for that, that service. Uh, we determine the level of financing uh, based on the, on, the, on the level that you're bringing in as far as uh, tax revenue. You go out, you get your own private financing, you apply to the NIS authority for qualification. Upon project approval, we finalize the terms with the, that financing institution, and we pay that institution directly based on the taxes that are receiving uh, from your, your proposed project. You build the project, and once in operation, the payment of taxes can be used to service the NIS debt. Next slide, please. So this is the way it works. As you can see, we have uh, a lender. You go out, you get your own financing. Um, you, as a developer, then get a tenant. Uh, the tenant uh, pays all their state and, and local taxes just as they normally would to both the state and, and, and the municipality. Uh, all those taxes come back to the authority, and we give it right back to you to pay for your debt service for the next 30 years. Next slide, please. And what this has done is it basically has accelerated development process substantially. So what would have taken us 20 years to build out as a municipality, we've built out in basically two. Over the last 24 months, as Shannon has talked about, we've put 2.6 million square feet of new space uh, in the play within our downtown marketplace. And I just want to highlight for you some of the uh, some of the new development that's occurred. Next slide, please. So all this is sort of anchored by a new arena, and uh, we built. And just to show you the power of the Miz, uh, this arena is it was was sort of the catalyst to redeveloping the downtown. We actually uh, did eminent domain on eight square city blocks. Uh, we took out the very heart of our city, put the a, a new arena which has a triple A. Uh, affiliate of the Phantoms, I'm sorry, of the Flyers, which is the Phantoms. Uh, it houses uh, 9,500 for sporting events, uh, over 12,000 for concerts. We've had major acts there, uh, major events. Uh, the arena itself is actually in the middle of this complex that you see up on top. We wanted to, to activate the street front, so we actually hid the arena uh, from sight because arenas are just big cement walls. Uh, we've, we've surrounded it with office, with a new Renaissance hotel, with uh, commercial space, all to activate the street front. Uh, and just to put this in perspective, this is the only public piece that was actually financed through uh, the Neighborhood Improvement Zone development. This was $316 million. Uh, all those bonds were, were floated uh, without any tax guarantee from the city, county, or the state, and they all went within four and a half hours, uh, which shows the tremendous power of the zone. And it's all built on the revenue being generated in the zone itself. Next slide, please. We also have new offices and new businesses. As you can see, these are all new buildings that have gone up uh, within the last 24 months, uh, over a million square feet of new office space uh, that either has been substantially renovated, like the picture that you see here with the, uh, the glass wall, which was an old uh, furniture store, or brand new construction, uh, almost entirely leased up uh, within a 24-month period. Next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, new restaurants as well. Over 20 new restaurant eateries opened in the last 24 months. We've seen this restaurant boom. 
everything from Starbucks to new facilities and new restaurants, new retail. Uh, we have this thing called the Arts Walk, which is that picture there in the corner. And at the end of that, you can see our Renaissance Hotel, which is a brand new hotel, the first one to open up in 40 years uh, within our downtown. On the very opposite end of this, of this walk is our Art Museum, our Symphony Hall, uh, and our School of Arts. So we're connecting the old with the new entertainment facilities. Uh, and peppering it with new uh, restaurants and retail uh, as well to make this connection throughout the downtown. Next slide, please. Uh, we also have a lot of residential development. Uh, millennials, empty nesters uh, are seeking uh, up-and-coming urban environments, and we're creating those environments. We have 170 units that have been completed. They're fully leased. We have 67 new units that are under construction. Uh, we have another 71 on board, uh, and we have another 1,000 units that are being proposed. So. Uh, we are creating an environment uh, that is a 24-7 environment, really building a live, work, play environment within our downtown context. We also have our downtown uh, authority community development uh, initiative is offering, uh, which is a coalition of a number of business uh, 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 corporations, uh, BB&T Bank, PP&L, and others have put up money uh, to basically provide $10,000 home ownership assistance for those who want to live in and around this new development zone that we've created. Next slide. We have lots of parking. Uh, we have close to uh, 8,000 parking spaces that were there uh, uh, before we started this development. We've added another 2,000 on top of that. Uh, we have close to 10,000 uh, structured parking spaces and another 1,400 spaces on the street. Uh, again, we've structured our decks uh, so that we can they're, they're prepped and ready for development. You'll see that deck in the corner. That one is fully built. Um, that's a thousand car parking deck uh, surrounded by green space, but that green space is available for development and we hope to actually develop uh, housing that, that basically uh, 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 ribbons the deck, uh, again, hiding the deck from, uh, which is again, just cement walls from, from, from view, creating a walkable environment within the streetscape. Next slide, please. These are some of the developments that have occurred, that, that will be occurring. We have a new building, Tower 6, going up, which I'll show you a picture of in just a second. Uh, we have another building, uh, Tower 5, uh, which will potentially be a 20-story building uh, that's on the books, uh, hopefully to go up uh, in the next year. Uh, the rest of the complexes are actually up and running and uh, uh, primarily leased 100% uh, at this point. Next slide, please. Uh, we're working on, on uh, trying to create um, uh, innovation as well, and so part of that innovation strategy is creating co-working space. Uh, we work with Trifecta Technologies. Trifecta, actually, if you've ever been to Disney World and you get these bands that that uh, provide for your your tickets and your dinner and your transportation, they've created that technology. Uh, they're working uh, with other developers to create co-working space for emerging. Uh, technology businesses, we call it Velocity. Uh, we also have our Bridgework Center, which is an industrial development center that's not directly within the zone, but outside the zone that's cre creating uh, uh, environment for startups. Uh, we're also working with Ben Franklin Ventures at Lehigh University, Penn State's Happy Valley Lunchbox program where they're actually bringing in uh, entrepreneurs from Penn State into the downtown. And, of course, as I talked about, we have the Bridgeworks Incubator operated by our Allentown Economic Development Corporation. Next slide. This is Tower 6. This is our latest development. Uh, this is on the corner of 6th and Hamilton, a 12-story building. It's actually going to be condoized, so each floor uh, could be uh, for smaller users to take advantage of the NIS benefits. Um, uh, 180 feet tall, mixed use, uh, again, retail on the bottom. Uh, office on the upper floors. Uh, this is under construction now. They just finished the demolition of, of four buildings to uh, to create the footprint for the site. And um, uh, my understanding is it's almost fully sold out at this particular point in time. Next slide. All this is creating lots of economic energy and lots of jobs. These projects have employed close to 900 local construction workers. A thousand new permanent jobs have been created. Uh, one of the things that we did early on, we worked with our local career link and community college. We did a number of, of job fairs specifically for Allentown residents, and I'm very proud to say that 64% of all the jobs created here went to Allentown residents. Um, and as you can see by these projects, there's a picture right in the middle. You can't really see it, but it says Erie Steel. Um, 5,000 tons of steel so far has come from Erie, Pennsylvania. 
36,000 cubic yards of concrete, that's 720 football fields of solid concrete, have come from Reading, Pennsylvania. So we're having this economic ripple effect, not only here in, in Allentown, the Lehigh Valley, uh, but across the entire footprint of Pennsylvania as well. Next slide. We're also investing in our surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, we have about 2.5 million that the city has put in, another 7 million that has been matched by private industry. Uh, and we're doing things like neighborhood blight remediation, home ownership, educational training, job training and development, all in the neighborhoods surrounding this new development that's happening uh, within our downtown. Next slide, please. And then of course we have uh, another big patch of land as you saw in that original footprint, which is our riverfront. Uh, we have uh, a part of the Lehigh River, and the only part of the Lehigh River that's navigable uh, because of the dam. Uh, so you can boat, you can water ski, you can jet ski, you can fish. And as you know, uh, most developers will know that you know people love water. You can build a restaurant next to a drainage ditch in the suburb, and people will sit and look at the drainage ditch. We actually have a real river. Uh, it has been separated from people uh, for many, many years by uh, a lot of old derelict industry. That's coming down. We're now building a 26-acre uh, mixed-use campus, $300 million in development that's planned, 675 square feet of Class A office space, um, a market rate residential, about 425 and 40,000 uh, square feet of Riverside uh, Main Street dining, uh, and a river walk that's actually going to connect uh, the entire uh, length of the riverfront uh, with the downtown and our park system. Next slide. This is how the plan is laid out. Uh, housing in the back, uh, office and walkways uh, uh, and entertainment facilities in the front, uh, new docks, uh, and as you can see on the very, very edge of this, you'll see a sort of a, 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 a road that sort of uh, comes into this picture uh, and goes out of the picture. That's a new bridge that was just built, a new federally funded bridge, an $80 million structure that actually will connect the site to uh, the east side of the city. Uh, as well as uh, Interstate uh, 22. Next slide. This is uh, some of the views of the river, as you can see. Uh, most of that industry is now cleared. Um, this is actually uh, what's going to happen. See if you could press on that on that uh, picture in the corner there. If it actually works. No. Okay. Next slide. And then we also have some manufacturing opportunities. Um, this is a, an old site called the Allentown Metalworks. Um, it's um, uh, really a, a, a ready-made uh, space to go for, for manufacturing. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, a reuse of an existing infrastructure. It has workforce accessibility, overhead crane potential. It, it is not in the neighborhood improvement zone, but it is in the Keystone Opportunity Zone which means that all taxes, all state taxes and local taxes, including property taxes, are abated for a period of years, has great access to I-78. Uh, DEP Act 2 compliance uh, uh, on the site is already obtained, so we've already cleaned up the site, and it ha actually has potential rail access as well adjacent to the site. Uh, a great site for reuse and redevelopment. Next. This is what the site looks like currently. Um, these three buildings exist. Uh, it has potential to be built out, uh, as you see below. This proposed site layout. Next slide, please. We've also really created stability in the city. Um, we, we went from a massive uh, deficit. We now have significant surpluses over the last 10 years. We've improved our bond rating from a B minus to an A plus. We're one of the only municipalities, quite honestly, not only in the state but in the country, who have uh, solved this pension problem. Uh, we did a very unique lease concession uh, on our water and sewer that uh, paid off all our unfunded pension liability. We eliminated our per capita tax, and this year uh, we're seeing now the 11th straight year of no property tax increase in the city of Allentown. Next slide. As well as our crime is going down. Uh, we actually have reduced crime over the last 10 years, part one crimes, by 48%. Homicides have gone down over 60%. Our overall crime rate has decreased 30%. Uh, uh, That's done by a number of things. We have the largest deployment of cameras uh, uh, in the state. Uh, we've increased our police department dramatically, but you can see these numbers. Um, they're, they're all heading in the right direction. They're going downward, and we reduced our, our, our most violent crimes significantly 
uh, over the course of the last 10 years. And Allentown is a much, much safer city uh, than it ever has been in this history. Next slide, please. Next slide. I want to show you briefly before we uh, ask uh, any questions and answer any questions a, a video. Uh, this was actually put forth, uh, put together by a local um, video company, Digital Feast, uh, but it was written by a group of Allen uh, uh, Town High School students, and uh, it really shows the transformation of our city. And uh, I hope you enjoy. After the video is over, we'll we'll, we'll answer questions um, uh, from those that are watching the podcast. If you can play the video, please. I was a queen among men. I was praised for my beauty my hard-working spirit. I was on the rise. Envied by all who knew me, I was a star. I was meant for glory. People would know me by my name. But I began to crumble. I lost my greatness. My good company disappeared. I burned I through life burned until, life until nothing, nothing was left. I was left a ghost of the past. Then something changed. Out of the ashes came a spark. I picked myself up, pulled myself back together, ready to heal. Today, I am strong, powered by a fresh energy. Today, I am overflowing with opportunity and potential, surrounded by diversity and culture. Today, I am proud. I am the product of hard work and determination. Today, I believe. Today, I know what I am capable of. I am limitless. It was not easy. It's still not easy. I was down for a while, but I am a comeback kid. I am Allentown. And I've only just begun. Please. So we're really proud of the transformation that's occurred here. We think we have a unique development opportunity, one that we would uh, love those uh, who are interested to participate in. Uh, up on the screen you see my personal contact as well as Michael Walker, who wasn't able to join us today, who's our operations manager in community economic development, and Shannon Calori. Um, we would be more than happy uh, to uh, have you come and visit, uh, show you the opportunities that exist, and have you invest in our great city. So with that, I will answer any questions that uh, folks may have. Thank you, Ed, and thank you, Shannon, for your presentation. At this time, we will take questions. If you have a question, please type it in the chat box, um, and then we will address them directly. Uh, first question goes to Shannon. Shannon, what type of community input or involvement was involved with the planning of down the revalidation of downtown Alcantara? So there was, um, you know, significant input from the community. I think we spent um, a lot of time talking with um, both Allentown residents as well as the surrounding communities to, to try to make sure everyone understood what the NIDS benefit entailed. And uh, so we continue to talk to the communities about uh, the NIS benefit, trying to um, explain it. Um, and as Mayor Pulaski suggested, we're also working very closely with the residential neighborhood just adjacent to the NIS to make sure that as we're rebuilding our, our um, 
center city, we're also making sure we're meeting the needs of the residents. And so there's um, um, public meetings all the time talking with the residents about what they want their community to look like and how we can work together to um, obtain a, a safer and a better place to live. Thank you, Shannon. Um, Mayor, uh, in your presentation, uh, you talked a lot about uh, office uh, space. Could you talk about what type of, uh, which industries are looking at your spaces uh, and uh, filling up those office spaces? Office sure, space? it, really, it really depends on, on, on the building, but uh, we had uh, National Penn Bank, which was a, a regional bank uh, that now was just purchased by BB&T. They, the, they really took the first building. Uh, and took a major space, air products and chemicals. Um, our major health industry has moved downtown. Uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, engineering firms, architectural firms, um, technology firms, all have moved into the NIS uh, over the course of the last 24 months. So it's really a, a wide mix of industry, um, but it really depends on the amount of taxes that you're generating. So if you look at every single building, the reason we have so many restaurants is because they generate lots of tax, right? You have, um, you have, uh, uh, food tax, liquor tax, um, and all those taxes go back to the developer uh, to pay for debt service, which gives the developer the ability to write down the cost uh, of those um, uh, spaces uh, at uh, below market rent prices. Um, also, you know, you have, if you, if you think about it, you know, those that generate lots of tax, banks, you have uh, bank shares tax, uh, stocks, you know, net premiums tax, um, insurance premiums tax, uh, stock shares, uh, uh, bank shares tax. So all those taxes uh, will go back to developers. So we have a lot of f folks in the financial industry that are moving in. Uh, we have uh, a number of mixed-use developments with lots of new uh, eateries because of the tax that's being generated there. Um, we even have some new unique uses. We had a cigarette stamping operation <laughs> that moved into the NIS. Excuse me, I'm struggling with a cold. Um, that's generating significant amount of revenue um, uh, for that particular developer. So it really is, uh, you know, dependent on the type of relationships that the developer has um, and the amount of taxes that are being generated to uh, really determine how much of that debt service a uh, potential developer can write down. Thank you. Um, again, if you have any questions, please type them in into the chat box and we will try to address them on this call. Um, just a reminder, this webinar will be available for download on our website, localdevelopers.org, uh, uh, later this week. Um, next question uh, uh, to uh, Shannon. Uh, if we have, uh, the question really comes down to, what type of additional incentives besides in this do Allentown offer? What kind of financial? Yes, other financial incentives outside of the news. Uh, we have a retail program um, called the Retail Mosaic, which allows uh, potential retailers uh, to tap into um, dollars uh, for uh, marketing and, and product development and uh, space uh, uh, for, for their business. Uh, we also have a homeownership assistance program uh, and we have other dollars that are being put out there by what we call the Upside Allentown Initiative. That's, a, that's an initiative that, that Shannon talked about that specifically um, addresses those communities that are adjacent uh, to the NIS. And uh, there's a number of different programs uh, that uh, we've put forth specifically through that Upside Allentown Initiative, uh, which can help local businesses, whether it's facades, whether it's um, dollars for, um, as I said, through the Retail Mosaic Program, uh, or whether it's other dollars for home ownership and uh, uh, types of assistance to remediate blight, all those uh, are uh, available in that zone that specifically surrounds the downtown improvement that's happening in Inez. Okay. Next question. Um, can you talk about the transportation assets within the downtown? Do you have light rail? Do you have commuter rail? What other transportation nodes do you have to create this wall for urban neighborhood? Uh, we don't have either. Uh, we have a, a significant and uh, um, bus system um, run by our, our local transportation authority. We have an intermodal hub that exists right in the heart of the zone. Um, and uh, we are working on rail currently uh, with uh, all three cities in the Lehigh Valley. 
uh, working with Amtrak to actually uh, develop a line from uh, Allentown uh, going through Bethlehem and Easton uh, all the way through New Jersey to New York. Um, and so we've uh, started that discussion. Uh, we're um, fairly far ahead in, in that discussion, but uh, we still have a long way to go. Um, but that's another potential that would actually accelerate the growth process, not only in Allentown, but throughout the rest of Lehigh Valley. And as far as being able to move materials around, we have an extensive highway network that easily connects to uh, New York City and Philadelphia. Um, we've had a great boom in warehousing industry in the Lehigh Valley because it's such a centralized uh, location and such an easy way to transport goods along the highway network. Yeah, Allentown is literally surrounded by Interstate 22, Interstate 78, the Pennsylvania Turnpike, uh, and uh, Route 33. So, I mean, we, we have um, extensive um, access both north, south, east, and west. Thank you. Uh, the next question, um, if taxes are circled back to developers for debt service, how is the infrastructure paid for or maintained? Uh, we still charge property taxes. So property tax, you still pay the property taxes, but it's an ins insignificant amount compared to the other taxes that are being generated by your potential uh, tenants through state um, taxes or business privilege or earned income. So uh, the property taxes are still paid, which allows the uh, municipality to, to pay for and generate revenue to uh, provide services and to pay for infrastructure. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, are there any current um, properties or land along the river for that uh, available for ownership, or are they all currently rental properties? So there's a lot of properties available for development. The city of Allentown doesn't own any properties um, within the NIS. Um, although I take that back, we do have some park space within the NIS. Um, but there's developers or there's property owners that are looking to sell their properties. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, to purchase properties and uh, to develop properties. There's a lot of properties that have yet to be developed. And from a timing perspective, you know, the NIS allows you 30 years or we're really about 27 years to pay down the debt service. And so it's important to kind of keep the projects moving forward as quickly as possible over the next couple of years so that the uh, developer has time to utilize that tax incentive to pay down their debt. Thank you, Shannon. Next question. Uh, Mayor, you mentioned that uh, other communities have tried this methodology. Um, what have you seen as the success, or is this particular project applicable to other towns uh, like yours and across the country? Well, we are the first, and uh, being the first gives us unique advantages. You always want to be the first because you help write the regulations. Um, so the the amount of taxes and uh, the availability of the taxes that are available for development are unique for Allentown. Uh, the state has copied this program, but they've significantly tailored back and limited the amount of taxes in this new um, um, Initiative that they call the uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 CRIS, which is the Community Revitalization Improvement Zone, improvement zone uh, as, far, as, as opposed to Neighborhood Revitalization Improvement Zone. And you know, you always want to be the first because you know the the, the copy is never quite as good as the original, <laughs> as far as the legislation. So we have um, in the original um, uh, the ability to really collect pretty much every state tax that isn't constitutionally restricted and the only thing we found is gas tax at this point because it is uh, constitutionally restricted for for highways um, but uh, pretty much everything else uh, is is fair game for development um, uh, even as I said cigarette tax so um, we we it, the, the the NIS is unique I don't know if the state of Pennsylvania will ever implement uh, another NIS um, the way that uh, this one is, is structured um, I don't think there's any um, uh, program that's as generous as in the NIS uh, in any other state. And so it creates a unique development opportunity. And we're always looking for other developers to come in and invest in the zone. There's still a lot of land and opportunities left. We developed about 25% of the zone. There's still many more opportunities. Some of them are, are opportunities where you have to demolish properties and be able to build new. 
but uh, depending on the, the type of tenant that you get and the resources that you're bringing to the table uh, from the taxes that they generate, that's insignificant. So um, there's, there's a, a lot of opportunities here and um, uh, the ability to um, um, really create significant you know, development uh, incentive um, uh, for potential developers, in, in fact, capitalizing on their building within seven to ten years. Um, so, you know, I would encourage folks, if they're, if they're interested, to come and actually approach us directly, uh, set up a time, come on down, we'll take you for, for a tour, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll introduce you to some of the other uh, developers that have been here in the Miz, so you can hear from their experience firsthand. Okay. Last question. Um, what has been the most significant land use or development design guidelines that you've, you've implemented? Probably the arena. Um, that was significant. I mean, that was five structures uh, that were sort of built into one. Uh, what we did is we actually built the arena. We then condoized the, the space, so we built out the, the structures of uh, a 200,000 square foot office building, uh, a 160 room hotel, which is a, now a Marriott Renaissance, um, and uh, commercial space, as well as a thousand space parking deck. Um, and all that was built by the revenue generated within the NIS. Uh, again, the, the city, uh, the county, the state had no tax guarantee put towards that arena. In fact, we have no financial guarantee in any way, shape, or form, which is probably the only arena built in the nation that could say that. Um, it's all being generated by, by the economic activity uh, uh, and the taxes being generated within the NIS zone. Thank you, Mayor. So that concludes uh, our webinar. Again, our webinar will be archived and available for download on our website, locustdevelopers.org. Uh, if you have additional questions, please feel free to contact myself, Christopher Coase, uh, at ccoase at locustdevelopers.org. For additional questions, uh, we also have contact information for both the mayor and Shannon. But again, I would like to say thank you to the mayor and Shannon for participating. And for those that joined the call, please look out. Uh, for additional webinars for other towns that we'll be featuring throughout the remainder of the year and to next year. Uh, with that, thank you for joining, and if you have more questions, please uh, just shoot us an email. Thank you. Thank you.